Next question is from Train with Faye. What was it like as a new trainer? How did you get your first real client? I'm new to personal training and I know I'm capable of helping others. However, I'm also aware that I'm experiencing a bit of imposter syndrome. What are tips to help you navigate the landscape with honesty and confidence and without turning away clients? This is still like really vivid for me. Do you guys, I mean, I I Oh, dude, like yesterday. Mm -hmm. I I remember this feeling. I remember my very first client, my first deal, all that stuff. Um, and then I also remember transitioning into leading trainers for most of my career and seeing what they many of them struggled with. And the imposter syndrome thing is like super common, especially mm-hmm. when you're learning, right? You're just learning all these all this different stuff with nutrition and mechanics and program design. And you know, it's a lot. It's a lot at first, and you're young and you're and then you're getting on. I, I would get, be getting these clients that are brilliant people, doctors and engineers. <laughs> they and ask what, you a lot of questions. Yeah, and they're very intelligent and they're asking you a lot of questions that you feel, damn, I don't know a lot of these answers. I think uh, one, uh, a common mistake is trying to pretend uh, like you know more than what you do. I mean, you, there's nothing wrong with saying like, I don't know, but I will find out for you by tomorrow or by the time I see you on your next session or let me look into that or I'm not sure. Like, like just get comfortable with saying things like that. I think people appreciate that. It reminds me like a, of uh, the first time you're, you sit in a restaurant and you have a, a waiter or a waitress mm-hmm. that has uh, never, never done this before. They don't know the menu. It's their fr- you're your, one of their first customers. And they don't announce it. And they don't the announce it. Yes. Right. They don't announce it versus announcing it. If they announce it and they tell me like, hey, uh, I just want you to know today's my first day or my first week. I'm learning the menu still. Like mm-hmm. all of a sudden, instantly, I have, I have a lot more patience. Doesn't mean I'm not going to want my food served by them. No. Oh, we can't eat here now because you're brand new. Like, no, I'm here. And now I have more patience that you're learning, right? So I can appreciate that. Same thing goes for training. Like if you're a trainer and you're trying to pretend like you know and you don't know, that comes off worse than just yeah. coming straight forward and being like, oh, I don't, I don't know these things. The other piece is the things that you do know. Stick to teaching that. Yeah. I I was this, I was this core guy, right? That was my thing when I first started. I I didn't know anything about the transverse abdominis. I didn't know how many muscles it incorporated. I didn't know how important it was to training it. I didn't know how to train it. I didn't know how to teach it to others. And I learned that. That was like one of the first things that I learned as a personal trainer that was new to me. I mean, I understood protein, carbs, and fat. I understood basic exercise science. Like I got that the basics kind of anatomy for somewhat, but the core was like this new thing for me. Like there, that was un, that was un, uncharted territory for me. And I knew that, wow, a majority of other average people that aren't into fitness, this has to be new to them too. And so I took that one thing that I knew really well, and that was what I taught or incorporated like with everybody. Like that was my main messaging was, this is what I have to give. I've learned this. This was new to me. It's very valuable information. Can I, and I'll teach it to everybody I know. So I would stick to talking a lot about the things that I, I felt confident in when I, we would address things that I felt less confident. In. I would admit, I don't, I'm not sure. Let me check or let me ask, and then I'll get back to you. And you build on that. And I think that's why experience is so important is you can't be afraid to be that person. And you go every time I, I'd have a session and almost always, uh, there was something that I would, after that session, I'd be back home researching it, yeah. you know, trying to learn more about whatever we were talking about. Yeah, I remember my first day, like, so vividly. I, I walked in uh, to the gym. Um, I had been working out for a while, and I went up to the front desk. This is how I got hired. I walked up to the front desk, and I'm like, uh, can I talk? To, I'd like to talk to your manager. And, and, and Okay, let me bring him out, and uh, I'd like to work here. I want to be a trainer. And they're like, okay, well, why do you want to be a trainer? And I did this five-minute whatever, and uh, they hired me. I walked in the next day, and that first day I got, I don't know how many clients I got uh, to hire me, but it was it was quite a bit. I, I had outperformed the top trainer in that day or the next day, uh, that, then they'd done the whole month. And so for me, my experience was passion, confidence, and it really wasn't that I thought I knew everything. It was that I really wanted to do this and help people. Right. So I need to get clients in order to do this. Now, my experience training trainers or having trainers work for me was a little different when the when I would hire a trainer, what this question is talking about is quite uh, common. And the way it would show up is like this. They usually weren't self-aware enough to say, I feel like an imposter. Usually what, it's, what they would say is, I feel funny asking for this money from a person, is what it was. Like, oh man, I got to ask them for you know, a, you know, a thousand dollars for 20 sessions. Mm. That's, that's a lot of money. I don't know if I can ask for that much money. And what that would tell me, and I remember hearing that going, yeah. 
What they'd you, say like I wouldn't pay for that. Yeah, like, they always like you know bring it back to themselves. Like if I was you know coming, well they're not you. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't pay that much. And I remember yeah. hearing that the first time, going, "What do you mean? You know that's hard for you to ask for." And I and then it dawned on me, this trainer doesn't think that they're valuable enough to ask for money to be paid for their services. And the conversation that I would always have always have is this: I'd say, look. You know, you, you got your certification. You've been working out yourself for a while, but you're a brand new trainer. 99.9% of the clients that you train, this is a real, this is like, I, I was. this is a true statistic, by the way, at, at least 90%, but probably closer to 99% of the people that you'll train if you work out in a normal gym or you train the average person, you are not going to apply any of your advanced knowledge at all. Yeah. In fact, what you're going to be doing with them because they're the average person is teaching them how to do a squat, teaching them how to stabilize their core, teaching them basic form. When it comes to nutrition, you're going to be talking to them about behaviors to help them eat maybe a little bit better, to care about themselves a little more. They probably don't even know what foods have proteins, carbs, and fats, except for maybe the few that they read in a magazine. And I would tell the trainer, all the knowledge that you have, you're literally going to apply 1% of it on most of your clients. So you know way more than the client does, right. and you actually know enough to help most people. And by the way, don't worry. I know you're new. I'm not going to give you the client that requires some kind of complicated rehab. I'm not going to give you the client that is working with four therapists on food issues. I'll make sure that my advanced trainers get that. You're going to train the average person. You are way more than you're worth way more than what you're charging because what you know is way more than what they know and they're here for your support and your help. So yes, ask for the money and then I would replace I would say it this way. It's okay. Take yourself out of the picture, okay? No what you what exercise and nutrition can provide anybody take the average person what do you think proper exercise and better nutrition can do for them and then i'd have them make a list well it's going to help them sleep better their their blood pressure will go down they're going to be healthier they're going to feel good they're going to look good better mobility less pain we go down this list and i'd say okay is all of this worth $1000 and then they'd say, well, yeah, it is. I said, well, that's what you can provide so long as they do what you say and they work with you. So you're definitely worth it. And then they go out on the floor and feel much more confident with what they're doing. So I think that's the thing that you need to understand as a, as a new trainer is that the vast majority of people you're going to encounter, you're going to apply the most basic stuff that you know and all the advanced stuff you're not even going to be able to bring up because it's not going to be relevant to that client. Yeah, I can I can definitely identify with uh, this person in terms of like the imposter syndrome and something that I've really had to work on personally in anything that I've done. Like anything that I've done where say I'm traveling across the country, now I'm starting over and having to prove myself and my abilities that I'm already confident in, but nobody else knows what I'm capable of like coming into, you know, a sports program or, you know, my, my past trek, track record for, uh, you know, how I did in school and I have to prove myself again to all these teachers and have to make all new friends. And, you know, this is all part of that uncomfortableness uh, that a lot of people avoid. And so they never grow. And so this is something that I've, I've realized uh, what the other end of that looks like is, is so much better. It, 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 this is all part of the process. You got to learn to, to enjoy it. Like right now you're, you're, you're learning, you know, you're, you're thrown into the fire. And so for me to be able to kind of move through that, I had to stay busy, man. I had to get reps in. I had to make calls. I had to go on the floor and talk to people. And I was really uncomfortable doing it the entire fucking time. It, it was really like terrifying a lot of times for me. But what helped me a lot was becoming more prepared, coming in with a plan. And, you know, whether or not I use that plan specifically, that just gave me more uh, internal confidence to then, you know, pass on to this person. I read this in a book. And so, therefore, I'm going to try this out. Uh, obviously, I know things. Things that I've done personally in the way that I've trained myself that I've seen to be effective, and I, you know, I led with that. Uh, but then I fine tuned it as I, as I, you know, got better and understood uh, people better with, uh, you know, what they were coming in with and how I could help them specifically, not just apply some formula to them, 
really start to kind of listen and, and learn how to, to, to tweak and modify, uh, you know, the, the type of service I was, uh, you know, providing uh, my clients. And so education should be something that you are really hungry for now. This is something you need. You need that in your toolbox. I have a hack for you for that too. So you're, if you work in a, in a gym setting, more than likely you have at least five to 15 other trainers that are your peers that you work around. And more than likely, if you're the, the new guy, um, most of them have more experience, possibly more knowledge than you. Uh, you are missing out if you don't every single day have a conversation that you learn from one of your peers. If you do mm -hmm. not walk up to Justin and say, hey, Justin, what's your favorite exercise to teach? Or Sal, what was like one of the most, you know, paradigm shattering moments for you in nutrition? Or what do you struggle? What do you do with clients? Like if you're not going and asking your peers how they overcome hurdles, what they have in their, what tools yep. do they have in their toolbox? And every day you're not walking away with a new piece of information that you can now apply to your clientele you are missing out on such an easy ass hack. And that was, and I, I remember I seeing this in, in, uh, in my team of trainers when I was just a trainer. Right. And I was like, this is so funny. Like everybody is so competitive because we're all fishing from the same pond, right? Because we're all working in the same gym. So many trainers look at it as a competitive environment and they don't want to share their secrets and they don't really interact that much with each other. And I was the complete opposite. I was like, I have a little bit of knowledge to share and a little bit of experience to share. I have a lot to learn. I'm going to befriend everybody, share all of the little knowledge that I have and try and gain as much as I possibly can. And so I spent so much time with all of my peers, learning from all of them, sharing with all of them. And over time, that just started to compound. And then before you know, knew it, it wasn't but a year and a half later, mm -hmm. I was all of their bosses because I just picked up, I my goal was like, okay, I'm going to take the best of Justin. I'm going to take the best of Sal. Like I'm going to learn what has made him successful. I'm going to learn what has made him successful, what's made her successful. And I'm going to emulate that. And I'm going to build that into my, my knowledge, my toolbox and start to apply it to my clients. So if you're not learning something every single day, when you work with a team of people, People that have been doing this longer than you have, you're already missing out on a real easy hack to get better at your craft. Awesome. 100%.